In Tractor Supply the other day, I came across this set of three ratchets. Although, calling these ratchets is maybe a bit of a misnomer because there's no ratcheting mechanism inside them. These are what Tractor Supply refers to as gearless ratchets. This design has been around for at least a couple years, and I know Snap-on has a model as well as some of the other stores like Lowe's. Since I first heard of these, I was really interested in this design and curious how well they worked. So when I found these on the clearance rack at Tractor Supply, it was hard for me to refuse. According to this sticker, the normal price is 30 bucks, and I paid 17. These are definitely a curiosity, but are they something that you would want in your toolbox? From the outside, these don't look too different from a standard ratchet. This type uses a button lock detent for retaining the sockets instead of a spring lock. The heads on the ratchets are a little bit larger than most, but doesn't look too unusual. But as soon as you start turning it, there's obviously something different here. That standard click clack of a ratchet is not present at all. In fact, after all these years, not having that feedback is really weird. If you can't really see what you're doing, it can be a little difficult to tell what direction it's turning the fastener in. And that brings us to the issue I was having with one of these right out of the box. This is the largest of the ratchets, the half inch one. The issue is that sometimes when turning this thing, it would change directions on its own. Just like that. Right there, the switch changed directions without any input. It seems to work okay when loosening and being turned in the counterclockwise direction, but sometimes when tightening and turning it in the clockwise direction, it will slip and flip to the other direction. The two smaller ratchets don't seem to exhibit this. It's not the biggest problem in the world, and considering how cheap these ratchets were, it's not too surprising they might have some issues, but what this is, is a good excuse to take the thing apart and see if we can improve it. In order to take this thing apart, we'll start by removing the little snap ring that retains the drive head of the ratchet. It's funny to have been using ratchets for so long and realize that I don't actually know what this part would be called. The drive square? Drive assembly? The anvil? I'm not really sure. I think I'm just going to call it the drive head. We'll use some standard snap ring pliers to spread the ring open and then lift it up with the flat blade screwdriver to keep it from popping back into place. Then we'll lift up around the perimeter of the ring until we can completely remove it. Then I think the whole thing should come apart. If we start pressing on that drive head, it does seem like it wants to slide out. With the assembly halfway out, we can start to see how these work. This assembly is in the body of the ratchet pretty tight, we'll just give this a push and make sure we catch all of the pieces as they fall out. And that's the entire body of the ratchet, it's just one piece and an open chamber. This mechanism here is where the magic happens. Yep, this wrench uses a sprag clutch. And since the wrench has to be able to reverse directions, it's not just a one-way sprag, it's actually a selectable clutch. And to separate the switch part of the assembly from the drive head, there's another snap ring we need to remove. This one is smaller and a little tricky to get to, we're basically just going to force it off with two flat blade screwdrivers and then pry it off around the perimeter. And pretty soon the ring has been removed and the assembly can be taken apart. And once we lift up the switch part, we can see how the detent works. It uses two little spring-loaded ball bearings. And that's about it. It doesn't seem like the button wants to come out of the drive head. I think the detent ball is press fit in there and that stuff's not going to come apart. It seems like there's only four pieces in that assembly. The detent ball itself, the button, the drive housing, and the spring. So in total, including the eight rollers, there are 20 pieces in this wrench. So for this assembly, I think the drive head would be the inner race, the switch would be the cage, the rollers would be the sprags, and the outer race would be the body of the ratchet itself. We'll take another look at exactly how this works when we start putting it back together. But as far as our problem of the ratchet reversing direction, that seems to be a problem with the detents not being strong enough. These divots in the drive head are where the check balls sit to lock it into place. One way to make the detent stiffer would be for these seats to be deeper. We briefly gave it a try with a drill bit, but the drive head is surprisingly hard for how cheap this ratchet was, so that wasn't going to happen. The next thing we can try to do is to increase the spring tension. Sometimes you can get a little bit extra by stretching the springs, but these springs weren't really having any of that and would just revert to their shorter height as soon as they were compressed. I didn't have any other springs this diameter and wire thickness on hand, so we'll just have to try something else. We'll install little spacers behind the springs to force them to be compressed more and hopefully make the detents stronger. We'll make these spacers out of little pieces of coat hanger since they're just the right size to fit behind the springs. 
We ended up trying a few different lengths of spacer to make sure the springs still have room to move, but are as tight as possible. To make the check ball part of this assembly easier to put back together, we'll use a little bit of engine assembly lube to hold things in place. Then we'll line up the parts and use the vise to help hold it still while we get that snap ring back into its groove. And once it's locked in, we can feel exactly how tight the detents have become, and it's a significant improvement. And with that back together, we can drop the rollers into place and hopefully get a good idea of exactly how this system works. Right now, the switch is actually in between the two detents and the rollers are fully retracted. You can see that they're sitting completely inside of that cage. But once we move the switch to lock the drive head into one of the detents, it pushes out on those rollers and extends them just a little bit beyond the outside of the cage. And that's how this mechanism works. Once the rollers are extended like that, they can roll freely in one direction, but it's very difficult for them to turn in the other direction since there is a wedging action forcing them between the drive head and the outer race. The more force that is applied to the handle of the ratchet while the drive head is resisting movement, the harder that roller is squeezed in between the wedge and the outer race. So the tighter a fastener is, the harder this mechanism locks up. It's a smart and very simple time-proven mechanism. To make this easier to reassemble, we'll set the switch so again it's between the two detents and then install the rollers and the whole thing will drop into the ratchet body very easily. Now we can clamp the ratchet in the vise and test it even without that front lock ring installed. This is when we went back and messed with the spring tension to get them as tight as possible. And once everything seemed to be working well, we reinstalled the snap ring onto that drive head. We simply used two small flat blade screwdrivers to pry it into place. We didn't add any grease to the ratchet or clean the inside, so it's still using that light coat of grease the factory gave it. We gave it a test and kind of shook it around to see if it wanted to switch out of that detent. But everything seemed to be going well. Just for kicks, we decided to put some serious force on this ratchet and see exactly how tight it locked up. While it never significantly slipped, while pulling very hard or while wiggling the ratchet, it is possible to make those rollers slip a little bit. This makes me think the ratchet should have more grease in it to help prevent the rollers from galling. I don't think that slippage is necessarily a problem with the wrench, but it's something to keep in mind. But after a while of playing with it and being a little bit rough, I was able to make the switch activate on its own a couple times. It happened way less frequently than before, but it still happened. It was at about this time I figured, eh, let's just take them all apart. Both out of a curiosity on how the mechanisms might differ, and because I was hoping to find a reason why the smaller ratchets have detents that hold while the half inch doesn't. We'll start with the quarter inch ratchet. This one comes apart in the exact same way, although the parts are smaller so it's a little bit more fiddly. And once we wiggle out the switch, we can see that the mechanism is basically the same, although it uses four rollers instead of eight. But the detents and the cage are set up the same way. Even though the detents in this one actually worked okay, I figured might as well make them a little bit stiffer. So we repeated the same thing with the pieces of coat hanger, although this time the pieces had to be very, very short. Then I decided it would be for the best to take the ratchets fully apart and clean them, then pack them with new grease. So we removed the clip retaining the drive head on the ratchet, cleaned up all the parts and reassembled the drive head and switch assembly, then packed everything with some synthetic wheel bearing grease. Unfortunately, when reinstalling that tiny clip for the drive head, it shattered. I didn't have the right size external C-clip that would fit it quite right, but I dug this clip out of the parts drawer and sanded it down a little bit to make it fit. It looks a little funny and I would feel better about replacing it with a better snap ring in the future, but it should do fine for now. We'll wipe up all the excess grease and make sure the ratchet still works properly. The detent is nice and stiff, even clickier than before, and the ratchet seems to work perfectly. And next, we'll repeat the same process with the 3 8 inch ratchet. We'll start by removing the snap ring and the switch. This one uses 8 rollers and is pretty much identical to the half inch ratchet, only a little bit smaller. We repeated the same trick to stiffen up the detents in this one, but then when we went to take it fully apart to clean it, we noticed that there are actually two shims in between the drive head and the body of the ratchet. That does explain why this one feels the tightest out of the three. Neither of the other two had any shims at all. Then again, we proceeded to grease up all the parts and reassemble the ratchet. This one works perfectly and doesn't show any desire to unlock, although the detent worked fine before. At this point, we disassembled the half-inch ratchet again in order to grease it up as well. Even without the cage installed, you can see how this wrench works. As the body of the wrench is rotated, the rollers are jammed up against that tapered edge and lock the whole thing up. 
And then it occurred to me that since this one doesn't have any shims to make it fit tightly, I think the body of the ratchet is actually rubbing against the switch, and the friction between those two parts is what keeps unlocking that detent. I didn't have any shims the right size, and even if I wanted to cut up a feeler gauge, that wouldn't be quite big enough. So I figured the next best thing would be to make a little more clearance between the switch and the body, and sanded down the outside diameter of the switch. We didn't remove too much steel, just enough to give it a little bit of extra clearance, and make sure the surface is nice and smooth and doesn't resist movement. Then we thoroughly cleaned the switch, and for one final time, reassembled the ratchet. It works better now than it ever did, but if you really lift up on the handle, it is still possible to make the whole thing unlock. The best solution would probably be fitting some shims in there, but farther sanding the outside of the switch would probably help as well. But honestly, it works pretty well, and it's so much better than before, I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. Besides, I don't really want to spend any more time on these cheap ratchets. So, despite my minor issues with them, I think they'll definitely come in handy. All too often, I get in the situation where there's not enough space to get more than a click out of a ratchet, and everything just takes forever. These are a little bit larger and heavier than normal ratchets, and are honestly a bit of a novelty, but sometimes there's nothing wrong with that. When it comes to tools, it's great to have a wide variety so that you have many options when trying to figure out how to tackle a situation. And one of these might save my butt one day when there's not enough space to even get a click out of a ratchet. So, for the price, I'm happy to have these around. 